you need the passion when you're going into business or you want to set up a business because you will get so many knockbacks on the way. And it, the only thing that keeps you going really is your love for what you're doing. For me, it, it's not about satisfying the customer. It's about delighting the customer. And I actually think the whole word of customer satisfaction, I don't like it. I think the word satisfaction is very average, a very average word. So for me, in our company, Chanel Medical, it's about customer delight. We're exporting to a number of countries. I have a distributor in Germany, a distributor in Denmark. But it's been really hard work along the way, and it's all about overcoming a hurdle, getting up, dusting yourself off, keeping on going, overcoming the next hurdle, dusting yourself off. The knocks I've had, if I didn't have them, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today because it makes you so much stronger. It makes you think outside the box. It makes you work the ass off yourself to make sure that it never happens to you again. And I have never owed a penny or a shilling to anyone since that happened to me. And that's the way we've always been because it was the biggest lesson of all time. Are you glad you let go? Yes, yeah. What was the biggest thing you've taken out of that letting go? There's a difference between being passionate about what you do and being emotionally attached to what you do. Coming into this like business world, I am just astounded at how helpful everybody is. And everybody wants to tell you, and they're telling you about these grants to go for, and these awards, and they're recommending you. And I'm thinking, God, there's an ulterior motive here. But it's actually, it's, it's genuine. Um, I joined the business, and we took it from one store with three staff up to 18 stores two weeks ago, employing over 180 staff. So it has been a journey. Strong leaders treat people the way that they would like to be treated. And I think we're all like that. They are extremely ethical and they believe in honesty, effort and re reliability, that that's the foundation of the business and that will give it the success. They embody those values so overtly that no employee doubts their integrity for a minute. Extraordinary leaders praise in public and they address problems in private, but with a genuine concern. So they demand people in an employment situation 39 hours a week, 365 days a year, unless your annual leave, that's what we offer, are you willing to take it? And there needs to be greater choice and flexibility and more of an agile model that can fit with the needs of what women are willing to supply in terms of their time into employment. It's people who you surround yourself with as well are crucial uh, to your success, uh, whether it be in a business or your home life or anything like that. France was one of the markets that I really wanted to crack early on. And I remember, you know, trying to get an appointment before I go out and see a potential company in France and I'd be on the phone and I'd be emailing them and literally like trying to stalk them to get a meeting and, and I couldn't get a meeting. But you know what, I got on the plane anyway and I went off to Paris and there was probably 10 companies on my hit list there. And I'd go to the reception and I'd give them my business card and I'd say, you know, could, could, could you ring Francois and tell him Chanel is here? And of course, Francois didn't know who Chanel was and no, of course, I'm, you're not going to get to see Francois. But you know what? I sat in those reception areas for hours and I thought to myself, I will catch Francois on his way out of the office this evening, right? <laughs> and if I have to wait here for three or four hours, and you know what? Because I thought to myself, if I can catch him for five minutes, there's a little chance that he might let me come back and see him tomorrow for half an hour. Because I know that if I can just get in front of him and tell him about my services and my product, that I can win him over. And you know what, a lot of the time it worked. I think a lot of them saw me out of pity, but I didn't care. I just, just wanted to get in front of them. You know, while I always felt in work, I was very controlled, I was very cool, you know, I had everything kind of organized. That It wasn't really that way in, you know, in personal life sometimes, you know, and then you kind of throw in AP's hospital visit in, in the middle of that. I felt the failure stakes were as high. Uh, I didn't think Dad had any faith in me to, to drive the business. I... Uh, I was setting this up in Loch Ray. you know, it's your home turf. Uh, I didn't want to, to fail on, on my home turf. Um, and I was trying to impress somebody that wasn't easily impressed, you know, with my dad. So, but fear of failure is a great motivator, you know, so embrace fear sometimes. When a job description comes out and there's 10 competencies on it, a woman will look at those 10 competencies and she'll say, I can do only do eight, I'm not going for that. A male will look exactly at the same job description, the same competencies, and say, I can do two of those, I'm going for that job. 
It's how you carry yourself. And the most important part of your body is your shoulders. So always remember to keep your ears over your shoulders. Okay? 